Oh, welcome back. We are here. Woo! Yes. Welcome to Real Women Real Talk. We are in so 24. Woo! Woo! <laughs> two four, y'all. Two four. I got it right. We we are going to jump right in. My name is Trinace Richardson. I am the founder of Real Women. And who are you, sister? I am the amazing Siobhan Carter, and I am one of the facilitators for Real Women. Yes, you are. Thank you all so much for joining us. If this is your first time, welcome to a safe space. If this is not your first time, welcome back. We all want you to go. We want you to go to all the episodes before this one. Check out all of them. Share them with someone. We are loving this podcast experience. And, you know, we're vibing and getting better and better every day. So please continue to take this journey with us. Um, we are about to have an amazing conversation, but it's built on Real Women, our nonprofit. And Real Women exists to create safe spaces for women development work, soul work on themselves. And we host sister circles in order to make that happen. And we do that across the country and abroad. We have set up regular sister circles in person and a regular monthly virtual sister circle so that you can join us. Please go check out realwomenrock.org to experience who we are. Just get some tidbits about who we are, and to find out when our circles transpire. We would love for you to join us. But since you're here, <laughs> we want to give you a sneak peek into what it's like to be a part of Real Women, the kind of conversations that we have. We kiki, we laugh, we have fun, we inspire and enlighten one another. And we want you to that with us right here on this episode. So you ready, sister? I am ready. I love these episodes. Yes, we've been having so much fun doing this. I love that who we really are, conversations the way we would have them in addition to the way uh, real women transpire. So I love it, love it, love it. We are going to jump into our first segment and our first segment is really just easing us into the conversation, you know, you sit down with somebody and you're like, how you doing, girl? Yeah. So, Siobhan, how you doing, girl? <laughs> girl, look, I just had some food delivered, right? And I just got a little piece, a taste of food. I'm I'm excited because I'm just thinking about how good this food going to be after we get off this episode. So I'm good. Food, food makes me happy. <laughs> girl, good food makes me happy, too. Yeah. So I know you are in your happy place just anticipating. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A good episode, and we're gonna make it one of the shorter ones, so you can go. Uh -uh, that's all right. No, uh, uh, it's gonna be fine because I'm excited. Okay. The anticipation is just, yeah, yeah. How good. you doing? I'm good. Thank you for asking. I'm having a really good season right now. By the time this is um, posted, we'll be beginning moving into the spring. Um, you know, March is unpredictable uh in the in the mm -hmm. part of the world we live in yeah. and so who weather it is right now but i'm looking forward to being able to come outside without a coat on and right. without a scarf and a hat so Please. looking yes. forward is what i'm doing right now. um but yeah thank you for asking okay. i wanted to end this real talk segment i wanted to check in with you about something that out um, from you, but I know that there's been some buzz not too long ago, the Emmy Awards happened, mm -hmm. and um, there was a speech, I think, that prompted a question for me that I want to ask you, but I think you, you heard a little bit more than I did. Can you share what that was about? Yeah, so from what I gather, she accepted the Emmy Award and she was giving her acceptance speech. And during that speech, she said, I would like to thank me. <laughs> Go ahead, girl. <laughs> because of all the stuff that I have done, the sacrifices that I have made, and 
and just really um, doing that. And I think um, in another another award ceremony, I think Snoop Dogg has done that before, if I'm not mm-hmm. mistaken. But there have been other people that have done that before. So, mm-hmm. so yeah. So that's where that came from. Just during that acceptance speech, she, she talked about everybody else. And she said, mm-hmm. and I want to thank me because <laughs> all the stuff that I had to do to prepare for these roles and get myself ready. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, girl. I love it. <laughs> so, so made me think um, when you mentioned it, and and it's been a buzz. Real talk. If you receive an award for something that you've yeah. been working hard in and excelled in, and you had to say thank yous, maybe you were giving and being appreciated, and you had to stand up. Would you thank you? I don't think I would. I don't think I would. I think there's so much messaging within me that says that is being boastful mm-hmm. and that is putting yourself on a pedestal or higher than you ought and all the stuff um, that I've read in the scriptures and internalized as to think that's a bad thing. I mm-hmm. love that people do that because in all actuality, Dog on it. I yes, I am a part of this. There is some sacrifices that I had to make. There is some energy that I had to expend to do this. So I am so um standing in admiration of people who have the confidence to do that. But I think something in me would cringe just to say that. So I don't I don't know that I would. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm with you as as amazing as it sounds. And it yeah. made me go, yes, girl, yes. Yeah. It made yeah. me do that. Yeah. When I'm the one standing up there, I would like to thank God. Right. I'd like to thank, <laughs> I'd like to thank my family. I'd right. like to thank those, all of that, that typical stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I but I'm telling you for me to someone do it. I think it makes me now think twice Mm -hmm. enough where, because, you know, we, we know how to put words together. You are a word myth. You hear me? (laughs) And so we can, we can put some, y'all, the holidays with Siobhan and it was a word game and it was a group (laughs) of us. Listen. This woman killed us because she's a little dictionary. <laughs> yes, she is. It's amazing. I was like, no one publishes books because words are, I thought I love words as an English teacher. It was impressive. <laughs> it really was. Anyway. <laughs> That's the kind of games I play on my phone. I just love word games. So yeah, I love words. Yeah, that was beautiful. I mean, I it was a wonder to watch. I was like, how did you get night? What the in the world? Like every time. Um, so I digress. I say, say that we how to put words together. So if we had to, we could craft something that wouldn't make us look, you know, um, all of that and add. Um, if we had, but we would have to, like you said, it's positioning. We would have to even think to put those words together to thank ourselves yeah, because <laughs> that may not even come to our minds mm-hmm. in order for us to do that. So I love that they yeah. thought to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mm-hmm. get it. I, I think it's beautiful. Um, but yeah, I don't know that I would, I would do, I just wouldn't. Yeah. I, it would just make me uncomfortable. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I'm going to start thinking through those words. I'm right. <laughs> Start thinking because I I like the idea of it. I do. Yeah, and we yeah. we come up with all of these I am statements and want we encourage each other and ourselves to speak more positively about our mm-hmm. to ourselves. Mm-hmm. And so I think that's the next step. As long as we're also acknowledging that we ourselves and yeah. all of that. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think it's a good thing. I love it. Because you well, know. Thank you. Go ahead. Maybe just one last thing, what I was thinking about, it's more about the people's perception than it is about our internal intentions. Mm-hmm. So if my intention is not to be boastful, then why wouldn't I, you know, mm-hmm. but because of conditioning, I've just been taught you're not supposed to do that. 
Mm-hmm. And, so, and let me, yeah. yeah, let me tell you, you in your 40s, I'm about to leave the 40s. Yes. And one of one of our sister friends is in her 50s now. Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm right there this year. And she was mm-hmm. like, You thought you didn't care when you crossed over the 40s and you just came into a new awareness. She said, wait till you cross over into these 50s. You're not going to give a flying fart about what people think. Wow. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love it. I'm here for it. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I mean, I still, I, I still want to um, appreciate and love on and thank. Mm-hmm. I remember two, it's probably been two marches ago now, but because March is Women's Month, Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I spent the entire month appreciating some of the women in my life, um, mm-hmm. on social media, just posted wonderful mm-hmm. words about all of them. Yeah. Um, because I really want to give people flowers. Some of them, mm-hmm. some of them, I think have gone on a couple of them have gone on, mm-hmm. um, yeah. and passed away, but I, mm-hmm. I'm really serious about giving flowers while folks can smell them and, you know, yeah. be appreciated. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I, I know how important that is. And it's not all about me. And I am standing of others. Mm-hmm. And also I'm working my ass off. So. <laughs> Both and this and that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> this and that. I'm honoring you and I'm working hard over here. And I need to acknowledge that. Yes. <laughs> yep. There we go. So that was real talk, y'all. And that was some yes. real talk. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. So now we take an opportunity from Real Talk, easing our way into the conversation. That felt more like jumping in, but we're easing our way. And now we are taking a deep and our deep dive allows us the opportunity to cover some deep, reflective topic that we've covered in Real Women or that is a sister circle worthy topic. Yeah. Um, and we get to really just dig in and, and mm-hmm. think about what we think about, you know, yep. <laughs> so yep. um, this is really allowing us to talk with you all. So we really do want to hear what you have to say about the topic as we're digging into it. If you have something you'd like to share with us, go to speakpipe.com forward slash real women, real t- so that you can share something with us. We would absolutely love to hear your voice. If it cuts off on you, just jump right back on and finish your thought. Um, and we we may play it, who knows, but we'll at least listen to them and incorporate those thoughts into our sharings. We would love to hear from you. So you ready, sister, for the deep dive? I'm ready. So one of, one of my favorite words, um, I want to talk about safety and feelings. Mm. So um, this is a really important word to me. Mm -hmm. I have in relationships in my marriage of 25 years and even before when I was dating, it was always important to me to feel safe. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I do a lot and I am a lot to a lot of people. Mm-hmm. So they have where I feel like I can let my guard down and be vulnerable and be and feel safe. And um, I didn't allow myself that space for so long before real women uh, and would at least look for it in the relationship that I was in. And mm-hmm. so that word has always meant a whole lot to me. Mm-hmm. In real women, we have literally set up our our mission and our purpose to create safe spaces. Yeah. And so really digging into what that word means to mm-hmm. each of us mm-hmm. and and how we navigate that word to me. So I want to talk about it in a couple of different ways um, because there's emotional safety. And if you come to mind while we're talking, please free to mention them as well. But I'm going to talk about two big rocks. Mm -hmm. There's for me, emotional safety shared um, where we can feel we, we know we're able to fully be ourselves 
and be vulnerable and not feel judged, mm -hmm. um, that we can cry, that we can be raunchy and raw yeah. um, and let it go and feel like we're in a place of safety, right? Mm -hmm. Then there's the physical safety that can sometimes be compromised where maybe, you know, whatever your fear triggers are. So mm -hmm. if you're in the dark or you're in a dark alley or um, I, you know, I have an issue with, um, with high altitudes. So yeah. just, um, looking down makes me really nervous and fearful that I don't feel safe. Mm -hmm. um, I, I work on conquering that, like going and walking the bridge. That's hundreds of, um, but, but that can make you feel unsafe. Um, and then maybe being around someone who does safe. Um, mm -hmm. they, you know, they feel like, you know, they might over you or abuse, all of those things um, can make you feel mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so in thinking about what makes us feel safe, um, both physically and emotionally, threaten that safety. I want you, if you think of any other that comes to mind for you, talk about what safety means and looks like for you. Um, and then for you threaten your safety and then I'll share. Okay. Um, so safety is really important, especially I'll start with emotional safety. That's really important to me because growing up, I didn't realize how unsafe I felt with mm. expressing my emotions. Mm. And it was more so um, because my environment, we just didn't learn. Uh, my mom, my grandmother, we just weren't really big on catering to emotions. Mm -hmm. And so anytime I felt emotions rise up, um, the the go to would just be to like, oh, you'll be all right, you know, to mm -hmm. to minimize how I felt. So I learned. Uh, through those behaviors, how to suppress my emotions. Mm -hmm. And so that that turned into me kind of doing that to myself. And then it wasn't until joining Real Women and then starting therapy where I started to see the importance of uh, being able to express my emotions. And I think being exposed to what a safe space could look like where mm -hmm. I am free to express how I feel and mm -hmm. not be shut down and not be judged or criticized for how I felt was so important for me in my healing, mm -hmm. um, in my growth and my, my personal development. So I think now I am a huge advocate for myself when it comes to emotional safety, because mm -hmm. what you're not gonna do after all of the work that I have done, mm -hmm. I will not allow anyone to put me in a space where I feel emotionally unsafe. Yeah. Um, and so I will remove myself from those situations quickly because my emotional safety is really important for me. Yeah. And I have learned how to be a safe space for myself, mm. which is another thing. So Sometimes, or, or what I learned in therapy is when I have created that emotional space of accepting who I am, giving myself space to vent in my journals, um, being compassionate and, and speaking kindly to myself, that is a way of creating a safe space of, uh, for me that mm -hmm. extends into my relationship with other people. Mm -hmm. So I had to learn that I need to create it first before I expect it from other people. So um, that emotional safety is so important to me. Mm -hmm. um, and then physical safety is also important because once again, I grew up in an environment where physical safety was a problem because of abuse. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so that was also something that is like, I don't want to be in any spaces where I feel physically unsafe. Um, mm -hmm. So my home is always like a safe haven for me. Um, so that I can make sure that I am creating physical safety 
even if I'm out and about, I think that may be a part of the reason why I'm such a homebody because mm -hmm. I don't like to be in spaces where I feel physically unsafe. Yeah. Um, and I think in a, in a previous episode, I talked about, you know, going on a solo trip, but I was still concerned about my physical safety to the point where I didn't leave the resort, you know, mm -hmm. so those kind of things. So physical safety is really important to me as well. Yeah. Yeah. Before you move into um, anything else, this is so good because mm -hmm. what you just said about being safe for yourself first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that's such an aha for me because how can I expect to make me feel safe mm -hmm. if I am not my own safe? Yeah. I don't mm -hmm. feel comfortable exploring my own emotion, feelings. And I think about, we've said this in previous episodes, but I think about some of the beautiful and amazing who come to our sister circles who have not delved inward as much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when, when being asked to do that, it's scary. It mm -hmm. does not feel safe mm -hmm. because they haven't tinkered around in there before, yeah. you know, yeah. or not mm -hmm. often. And so, um, it, it, it may be that there that our at any point that we've been there, because all of us have been there, mm -hmm. that our relationships would not feel like safe spaces because we don't, for example, we don't know what we want. So how yeah. can we clearly articulate to somebody mm -hmm. what we want when we haven't expressed it clearly to ourselves yet? You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um we just know we're unhappy and we don't, <laughs> you know. Yeah. It, you doing this to me. You making me right. feel this way, but we right. explored what that is to ourselves. So that's so important that safety starts with us. I love yeah. that. Safety starts with making ourselves feel safe emotionally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what I want to say about that too, I had I I know that now, but that had to be modeled for me in order mm -hmm. for me to learn how to create that safety for myself. So mm -hmm. I didn't have the tools in the beginning. So real women creating safe spaces, I started to experience what that felt like and what it looked mm -hmm. like. And then going to therapy, he, my therapist modeled what a safe space looked like for me to express myself, for me to process my emotions, for me to explore different things about myself. So I would say if there are women who don't don't have the skills or the tools to go within surround yourself with people that feel safe where it's just like mm -hmm. you don't have to worry about you know your emotional well-being that's a great starting point and i think real women was definitely that for me yeah so. that's so good that to have especially if you haven't had exposure to that mm -hmm. to put intentionally in spaces where that's being I'll say for me, I, I mirror a lot of what you shared. Um, the whole emotional safety for me is I have been other people's safe space hmm. for so long that for a while I turned off when it came to even monitoring my level of safety. Hmm. And what that turned into was building a bit of a wall. Mm. Um, because, and I, you know, I've learned how to break down the wall and notice when I'm trying to build bricks back up again yeah. and that kind of, but I'll give an example in ships, um, before my husband and you don't stay married 25 years dealing with some of what we're talking about. Right. Um, but even before my husband, my pattern was if I felt at any point that something I said was used against me mm -hmm. or if I felt that um, you're, you're too harsh with me yeah, um, or any of those things, oh, I can shut down and still, you think I'm still here and I yeah. have just shut down yep. um, because it's not worth it to me to open up and, tr and it, that's, that risk is too great emotionally. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. and you've already proven with that comment or with that action or a lack of consent that you don't care enough about my feelings for me to give them to you to handle. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so that that has been a mode of operation for me. Mm-hmm. How to give the type of support, emotional support that I would like to give. I know how to be someone's safe space, mm-hmm. but I've had to talk to myself mm-hmm. um, that I need the same safe space mm-hmm. <laughs> that I'm willing to offer. Yeah. And, you know, it almost brings me to tears. I'm sure in one of the first episodes I talked about this, but when, and your sister circle, when my sister circle made themselves available to me in mm-hmm. a very real and tangible way mm-hmm. and say, say space with this, this, mm-hmm. <laughs> this and mm-hmm. that, mm-hmm. Um, it broke me down because, mm-hmm. and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not a water sign, so I'm a, I'm a cancer, mm-hmm. but I don't know that I had been as much of a crybaby as I have been in these years because it just means so much to me to be able to release mm. um, in a safe space. And so Real Women has done that for me as well. Yeah. And um, and I, I, I believe it is saving grace. So, so your... Your first tip as it relates to getting in community or mm-hmm. in being exposed to what that looks like so that you can get in the practice of seeing it, experiencing it, and delving in there and realizing the water's okay, you know, yeah. dipping your toe in the yeah. water. Um, I, I I would I would like to further that conversation about things you can do or things we should not do. I think we use our voice mm-hmm. and speak up for ourselves do not feel emotionally safe yeah because we will mute ourselves in a second and you know this is not just your throat it is not just your voice box it's an energy center mm-hmm. and so if if you're not, if you, if in relationships you are not using this, mm-hmm. perhaps you might experience colds, mm-hmm. you might experience coughs, you might experience hoarseness a lot, mm-hmm. you might experience issues physically with this because it's connected. It's all connected. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, that's one tip I would give you. So. So it, my okay. My mind is processing a lot right now um, because something just came up as you're talking about um, thing like things that we can do to make sure we're 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 creating and um, just putting ourselves in, in emotional and physical safe spaces. What comes to mind is a book called um, "Your Body Keeps Score." I think that's mm-hmm. yeah. the, your yep. body keeps, your body the, keeps score. the score. Mm-hmm. And in that, depending on the level of trauma that we have experienced, we can perceive someone or something as being unsafe when it's really a trigger of our trauma. And our body is telling us there is danger because of what our body, like the signals that go off within us that say you're in danger when that's really not. So it creates this sense of hypersensitivity to danger when danger may not really be present. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. what I would offer is therapy. And (laughs) I know it... (laughs) I know it sounds cliche and and it is a commercial, but but I'm really being serious. Safe spaces like real women so that we can process through our traumas and some of the things that we have gone through so that we can practice looking at life through a healthier lens. Um, Mm -hmm. Because I know for me, that was absolutely a part of my my story of seeing things, especially men, as danger. 
because I did because I grew up in in such a a, a hostile and volatile home that was um, a man being very aggressive and argumentative and all of that. Anytime a man would be direct with me, I perceived mm. it as abuse or attack. Mm-hmm. When maybe he was just being passionate about what he was feeling in the moment because he has feelings too. Now mm-hmm. that can be a fine line because there are some people who are abusive. So I'm not trying to, you know, uh, excuse any um, harmful behavior, but just offering a different perspective. If you find yourself in a situation where even with women, if you think that anybody who's being direct or raising their voice is uh, an attack against you, it may be uh, an area to explore to make sure that that's what's really happening. Um, so that's what I would you just you just hit on what we talked about in the the last episode too that communication happens in different ways, and some yeah. people have a direct to their communication. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we've got to be able to distinguish that Mm -hmm. something else came to mind when you were thinking about, um, shout out to Reverend, uh, Anika Wilson Brown, Mm -hmm. um, because I listened to her power ups in the mornings. And, um, at the time of this taping, just, she had mentioned, um, (laughs) the fact that fear and excitement Mm -hmm. have the same feelings behind them. Mm -hmm. It's just that fear does not produce anything productive, right? Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. so the same, the same uh, triggers and and, uh, neurons and, and all the same nerves that are, that are triggered for fear are triggered Mm -hmm. for excitement. It's just, you know, you end up something good and then you end up with these negative feelings or lack of endorphin mm-hmm. but it, it comes from the same space in our bodies and our nervous system mm-hmm. and it just lends itself to what you're saying sometimes we are interpreting some of things differently and yep. we we need um help crystallizing what's happening what's actually yeah. happening what mm-hmm. we're feeling might be different from the facts or the truth of what's actually happening. And yeah. we might need some help filtering mm-hmm. that out um, mm-hmm. because our trauma um, causes us to see through a certain lens. Absolutely. And sometimes, yeah, I'm thinking of our sister, Sherry, sometimes you got to defrost the lens yes. So, yes. That you can, so that you can see it clearly. So. Yeah. So good. It, mm-hmm. it, and and that to we don't have the answers, right? No. Nope. You actually have the answers within mm-hmm. you. Yeah. And you just may need some support mm-hmm. in a safe space mm-hmm. for those answers to emerge out of you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. So good. So Absolutely. good. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Thank y'all for, we really want to know what you think about this topic of safety because it's important. It is important. I think out of us um, comes all of our passions and our, and our, our freedom and our, it comes out of safety. Because mm-hmm. if, we, if we don't feel safe, we hold ourselves hostage. We hold Sales hostage if we yeah for sure yeah. So mm-hmm. finding that is so important mm-hmm. so, yeah so we want to hear from y'all mm-hmm. speakpipe.com forward slash real women real talk let's hear what you got topic of safety that was mm-hmm. good yeah that was good i love that yeah thank you so we move from deep dive. We come back up a little bit and we about putting ourselves in someone else's shoes. And this is our third segment. It allows us opportunity to scenario, a current event, a trending topic. And instead of just pointing the finger, they should have done this and they should have done that. We put ourselves in their shoes and think, okay, so if I were in that situation, what would I be thinking and what would I be feeling? Um, it allows us to be less about others 
inward focused. Sister, I came up with a scenario. Okay. <laughs> Let's hear it. I'm excited about this one. So we do want to hear what y'all think about this. Um, I'm just going to go ahead out there a little bit to what we've been talking about, but this is just some girlfriend stuff right here. So yeah. Beverly and Tina, mm -hmm. they have been friends for over 20 years. I mean, long time friends. Mm -hmm. School. And they have gone their separate ways, you know, lived in different states and had relationships and stuff, other friends, um, work job, all children, all of that. They're, they've been living separate lives, but they still keep up with each other. You know, those friends, mm -hmm. you can pick up the phone and pick right back up where you left off. Yeah. Um, so they've both had relationship ups and downs. Um, but now they both are single. Whatever their statuses were before, they both happen to be single. They're good and grown. <laughs> As a result of talking to a mutual friend, Beverly finds out that Tina is now seriously dating Beverly's high school slash college sweetheart. I mean, this guy was so in high school and that transferred into both of them being in college and dating and the only reason they are not together is because tony chi you know um while doing a long distance relationship so okay. tina was heartbroken her friends knew it beverly um, she was present, you know, didn't, didn't live in the same state, but she was present by phone and text to hear about it when it happened and everybody moved on. Um, Tina moved on and 10 years later, so somewhere within that 20 year relationship between 10 years after Tina and Tony, a mutual friend tells Beverly that Tina is dating Tony and getting serious. Wow. Listen. Wow. Tina, Tina only talks to Beverly once every two or three months. And Tina has not mentioned anything about Tony at all. Not can I date him? Not I'm interested in him. Is that okay with you? Not we're dating nothing. Didn't bother to pick up the phone and call and say anything about it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and honestly, Beverly's thinking, you know, this has been over 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. Tina moved on, right? right. Mm -hmm. Tina wants to lay her out, but is just the right to do so. Mm. From Beverly and T's perspective, what, what do you think? What do you think? Putting yourself in their shoes. So putting myself in, I'll start with Tina. Tina is the one that was dating Tony back in the day, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and she no, just no, found no. Is the one who is dating Tony, and Beverly who used to date him back in the day. Oh, Beverly used to date him back in the day, and Tina is now dating Tony. Yes. Okay. Okay. So I'll start with Beverly uh, first. So me hearing this news from a mutual friend that Tina is now dating Tony, um, mm -hmm. even though we don't talk as much, I would still think that we had, you know, a, a friendship and a sisterly connection. Um, and I would think that Tina wouldn't date someone that I was madly in love with. Um, so I would be heartbroken that even though it was 10 years later, that still somebody that I had deep feelings for and experienced hurt. And I vented to Tina about what I was feeling and she was that shoulder for me to cry on. So I would feel a little betrayed, honestly. Um, and I would want I, I, if I'm fuming, I don't think I would be able to confront her um, because it would just, I would be in my feelings about it. And I don't think I would be able to communicate what I had to say. Now, I think that's where the not talking for two to three months would come in hand, you know, come into play because it's like, look, don't, now don't call me out the blue because mm -hmm. then I'll probably say, 
how I feel, but um, I would want to give myself time um, before I talk to her. So, yeah, so I would be really hurt and feel betrayed and, and just not understand why she won, why she would do that. And then why she wouldn't just tell me about about mm -hmm. that. So yeah. that's how I feel on on as before, you, before mm -hmm. you go to Tina, I realized at some point I used their names interchangeably. So that was the okay. initial confusion. But mm -hmm. yes, exactly what you just said. So go okay. ahead. Gotcha. So if I were Tina. Cool girl. Okay, let me try to put myself in Tina's shoes because I'm not, I don't know. I'm not understanding why we, why you would get with Tony. Um so let's say, okay, in my mind, I'm thinking, you know, it was a long time ago. We were young, you all broke up, you went through what you went through, but now we're in our forties, and so that was that was a long mm -hmm. time ago. So if I think it, about it from that perspective, I'm not as close to her um anymore. Um, but we are friends. And Tony just looked good and we seemed to hit it off. And the one thing led to another. And now, you know, it, we done slipped into a whole nother situation. And now it's getting serious. And I and I wasn't planning for any of this, just wanting to have fun, but now I done caught feelings because mm -hmm. Tony, Tony looked good and feel good. And so um so I think I would be probably experiencing some inner conflict, honestly, because I know mm -hmm. what happened to Beverly. I know how she felt about him. And I have given into my feelings for Tony and mm -hmm. it gone too far and crossed that line. And now I'm at the, the point of no return because I want mm -hmm. some more of Tony. <laughs> so I think I would probably not have called her because I'm avoiding the conversation, honestly, because I don't want to deal with um the hurt that Beverly probably feels and, and don't want to be confronted, honestly. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so, yeah. Yeah, I get it. Let me tell you, Tony must have a good good. Because he got to have <laughs> Got to. So if I were Beverly, I would, my, my relationship with Tina is forever changed. But remember, mm -hmm. I just told you that I will shut down in a heartbeat. So yeah. she may, because we only talk every couple of months, mm -hmm. I'm not calling her. So right. if she calls me, it it may, because of my pride and because it's 10 years ago, mm -hmm. um, I may not even mention it. I may just, long it takes for her to mention that mm -hmm. she's in a relationship with him just to see yeah. Um, and I, and I'm, I'm probably, my pride is not going to allow me to act as hurt as I want or mm -hmm. I am. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I'm just going to shut down it, me. I know mm -hmm. I'm just going to shut. We'll never be at the level we were before because right. of this. Yep. Um, e even if we were to talk through, I just can't fathom anything that you would say mm -hmm. that would not have caused you to at least come and just mention it to me or talk to mm -hmm. me when you knew that mm -hmm. that was my dude back right. then. You know, right. yes, I moved on, but you know, they call it guy code. There's some girl code in there too, For somewhere. Sure. Yeah. So so we just would not be the same anymore. Um mm -hmm. and if I were Tina, I wouldn't expect but I I made a conscious decision to say to hell with my relationship with Bev. This right. is some good good and I right. want the good good and I'm yep. giving up on my, I am okay to sacrifice my relationship with Beverly mm -hmm. for this relationship. Um, mm -hmm. That's what I would be saying to myself because right. I can't fathom how Beverly would be okay mm -hmm. with me not even talking to her about it beforehand. Because if I had gone, I'm Tina, she, Beverly might have said, girl, I ain't th thinking about him. Go right mm -hmm. ahead. Mm -hmm. You know, or I appreciate you letting me know. Um, it's not my preference, but if you mm -hmm. decide to, I respect you just, you know, you, you mentioned it to me, mm -hmm. but because I didn't do any of that, I've just decided, you know what? Me and Bev probably never going to be the same again. Exactly. And I'm going to play yeah. this whole relationship out and see if it works out with right. us. Right. So, right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's a, that's definitely, um, a relationship dynamic that would shift because it is just. To me, it just feels like such a betrayal for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mm -hmm. I just want to say all of us have 
a little bit of Beverly and a mm -hmm. little bit of Tina in us where we yeah. have, you know, we have to, if, if we don't just straight go there and say, I'm willing to sacrifice some morals or some, you know, what I think mm -hmm. is right for the sake of whatever, right. Yeah. Love yeah. Or, or sex, whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, if we don't, if, we've thought about it even if we didn't actually go do something we thought about mm -hmm. let me go do something real raunchy and ratchet that i wouldn't really want to admit to nobody but i i still want to do it whatever mm -hmm. that thing is so yeah. even yeah. in this scenario me from pointing a whole lot of fingers at her mm -hmm. i just would hope that i would go to beverly and have a grown woman conversation with her Mm -hmm. instead of doing it behind her back so let me tell you i have been tina mm -hmm. back in college which is why i had to go back to what i was thinking at the time because i have been mm -hmm. tina mm -hmm. where i absolutely did something like that i was with the guy first we were just messing around and then i became friends with this young lady and then she got into a relationship with him mm -hmm. um and then I was still sleeping with him while they were in a relationship and she mm -hmm. caught wind of it. Mm -hmm. And I was just acting like, you know, me and her were still good and, and all of that, knowing that I was still intimate with him while they were together. Mm -hmm. And so when I think about where I was during that time and I never shared with her and she eventually confronted me about it and I was honest with her, but I would not, I was not going to say anything because mm -hmm. one, I was ashamed. Mm -hmm. um, to bring that up to her because, and I felt so guilty because she was such a sweet person and didn't deserve that. And, um, so I just felt so guilty and I felt like such a bad person that I would be doing that. So it's just so many emotions that Tina is probably feeling because she just gave in to, to her, to her body and her, and mm -hmm. her own emotions as it relates to him. Yeah. yeah. So the real scenarios for sure about it the the choices are avoidance right mm -hmm. yep yep <laughs> make um it hard but all of this time i've been able to avoid it mm -hmm. i have not had it to deal with any conflict. Exactly. So exactly. Yep. I would rather avoid it for as long yep. as long possible. possible. Yep. And maybe maybe we never end up talking about it. But mm -hmm. if we do, I it wasn't my preference to start off with confrontation. Exactly. And that's how many of us are, you know, mm -hmm. we rather sure. choosing the easier thing in the moment is a is a trait. So yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. this is real well, stuff y'all yeah real mm -hmm. stuff we be talking real now so <laughs> what would you do how would you handle it we would love to know um if you were beverly or tina now that we got the name straight please mm -hmm. let us know go speak um, real women real talk we would love to hear from you Sister, this was a fun episode. I think yes. between you know the top safety and all of that, um, what comes to mind as a spiritual nugget? Um, something that allows us reflection, uh, maybe some inspiration or motivation as a result, of directly discussed or not. Mm -hmm. The first thing that comes to mind is be a unapologetic about you being a safe space for yourself mm -hmm. to the point mm -hmm. that if you don't know what that looks like, you actively seek out that type of space, mm -hmm. whether it be therapy whether it be a coach, whether it be coming to real women, mm -hmm. finding a space where you feel like, oh, I can just be, I'm accepted. What I'm saying, people not, you know, raising their eyebrows at me or frowning up their faces at me because of what I'm saying, no matter how real or raw it is. Mm -hmm. Um. But be unapologetic and intentional about finding that space for yourself because it will unlock 
a level, another level of freedom mm -hmm. that is so beautiful. Um, and it also just teaches you how to love on yourself even mm -hmm. more. So that's, that's what I would offer. Oh, Ooh. the one thing we're talking is of us emerges in safe spaces. Mm -hmm. The best of who we are is able to come up and express yourself when we feel safe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. ah. Yes. Thank you, sister. Mm -hmm. This was a beautiful episode. I love. We will do all and then end on a wusa. <laughs> mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yes. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Well, y'all, this has been our 24th episode of Real Women, Real Talk. Yeah. We are in our 20s. <laughs> so we would love for you to like, follow, and share wherever you find us. Real women you can find on all social media platforms and go to our website at real.org to find out about our sister circles, uh, here with someone else, and all of the many ways that you can connect and engage with us. We would absolutely love to connect with you all. Thank you so much for being here. And we are real women. Yes. And real women talk, honey, and create safe spaces. Yes, we do. Ciao, we do. Mm -hmm. Take care. <laughs> All right. Bye, y'all.